It's really important to take stock and just reflect on where the Navy is. And I remain really pleased with where we are. That's a reflection of, I think, phenomenal leadership and commitment to help us through this pandemic. And it's also a reflection that we've maintained all our operations. We're making some changes to the Navy that we have to make, but we're also doing some big new things. We're going to be 50% bigger in tonnage terms in 2030. Over the next decade, we have seven or eight new classes of ships and submarines being built. Now that hasn't been seen for nearly 50 years. All of those mean that we have to adjust and change with it, and that's positive. We're a great Navy, and we have the opportunity to be an even better Navy, and that means being willing to adjust the things that need to be adjusted so that we can be even better. So we need to change because the threats have changed, and these are big state threats, and we need to adjust to them. The other piece is this technological revolution that is going on in all our lives. And we need to embrace that in a much stronger way. And one of the other aspects of how we respond to those threats is being out there in the world. And we're already, you know, we've got HMS Trent now deployed in Gibraltar, doing amazing things in the Mediterranean, the Black Sea, and about to, to start operating off the coast of Africa. We've got Medway in the Caribbean as a permanent basis. We've been successful with HMS Montrose in the Gulf and with the MCMVs and with the support ships there. And then if you look to the Falklands and HMS Forth, but as well as our commitment to the Euro-Atlantic and NATO, we also have to reach out further into the world. The Integrated Review talked about a tilt to the Indo-Pacific. You're seeing that with the establishment of a littoral ready group that will operate out of Duckham reach across to India, reach across to Diego Garcia, be able to contribute along the coast of the east side of Africa. We've got the two OPVs, uh, HMS Tamar and HMS Spey, about to head off and then staying in the Indo-Pacific and contributing to our interests there. There are more risks with us staying the same than changing. My worry is that if we don't change, we risk letting the nation and the government down in 10 years time. So the responsible thing to do is to change now. And we need to take the opportunity for change and look at everything that we do and say, why? Right, how can we be even better? How can we look after our sailors and Marines even better? How can we make the front line the best place to serve? How can we modernize? I'm serious about the front line being the best place to, to serve. That's where you get your leave. That's where you get your best training. That's where we try to give you the certainty and stability that people have been craving for at least 10, 15, 20 years. We owe it to our sailors and Marines that they can look at their personal details, their leave. They can book things. They can have a conversation about their pay statement without it being a massive palaver, without having to go to the UPO. They should be able to do that at home in the comfort of their own home with their partner and, and discuss their next career choices. And then the other piece is to be honest with them and say that we as senior leaders have got an obligation to that individual to maximize their potential. The quality of our men and women all the way through the service is phenomenal. And we need to unlock that potential. So traditionally, I have a First Sea Lords Conference every year, and it's aimed at captains and civil servants of that rank and above. And this year, on the 10th of September, I want to have a slightly different conference. I think that senior audience, they've heard enough of me. They've heard the same old thing. I want to speak to a younger, more junior audience of lieutenants, lieutenant commanders, of civil servant equivalents, of petty officers, of sergeant Royal Marines because they're the ones that are going to inherit this future Navy. They're the ones that need to embrace the change. They're the ones that need to steer and shape it. And I want to have the conversation with them. Your people need to know that. They, they, they also need to know that we are admired and we have a government that is really grateful for what we're doing. Whether that was the support to the rest of the nation and particularly the NHS as part of the pandemic, but also the fact that we keep all our operations green 
throughout this period. And we have a government that wants us to do even more. And we've got some massive programmes. Carrier Strike is a massive programme with a fifth generation aircraft carrier and a fifth generation aeroplane, an F-35. We've got the Astutes coming in, so we're going to have a new submarine force. We then start the changeover of Dreadnought, replacing Vanguard. All of these things are in the next decade. And so we need to get after it. And we're doing that with the future commando force. Our Royal Marines are modernizing so they can work more closely with special forces and intelligence agencies. And again, be out there as part of a permanent presence. So this is a big moment for the Navy. We must not let our nation and government down in terms of the threats and challenges that we face over the next decade. So change now and be an even better Navy and be prepared to look at everything that we do.